my neighborly hospitality extended to me and my delegation since our arrival in this historic city of Johannesburg. My delegation equally acknowledges with a deep sense of appreciation the excellent work that NEPAD has accomplished in recent years under the able leadership of Dr. Mayaki and his hardworking team. We request for more exertion of your faculties, Dr. Mayaki, as the task before us is huge, although by no means insurmountable. Your Excellencies, as the Economic Development Agency of the African Union, NEPAD has made breakthroughs in various spheres of its mandate and objectives in recent years since its inception. Breakthroughs have been registered in project conceptualization, formulation and implementation as exemplified by the Program for Infrastructure Development in Africa, PIDA, and Science, Technology, and Innovation Strategy for Africa, capacity building at the level of the regional economic communities and women and youth empowerment programs are some of the noteworthy achievements. NEPA's exceptional drive in the area of resource mobilization, food security, and nutrition with the advent of climate change has been remarkable. Moreover, NEPA has provided a critical synergy, the synergy between and among African institutions, thereby enhancing the much needed continental integration as envisaged in the Lagos Plan of Action of 1980 and the Abuja Treaty of 1991. Distinguished colleagues, challenges continue to dog the African continent in spite of the cited strides achieved in the area of sustainable and inclusive economic development. Poverty, hunger, and diseases continue to work to wreak havoc on the African continent, while its vast natural resources are being exploited and exported in their raw or semi-processed form. African natural resources and commodities are beneficiated and value added elsewhere outside the continent, immensely benefiting those countries while African people continue to be impoverished. As an agency established to fast track the implementation of African economic development, I would like to call upon NEPAD, the regional economic communities and the other African institutions to come up with viable strategies and expedite the industrialization of the continent to curtail and reverse the export of unprocessed resources. Let's work on an integrated basis on the industrialization of our or economic entities. 
I urge NEPAD and similar African institutions to include industrialization among our priority or priorities with regard to our high impact programs and projects. Surely, the African people cannot continue to be hewers of wood and drawers of water while others delight in their resources, in our resources. With unwavering courage and collective determination, Africa can also industrialize in the same manner other regions have achieved industrialization within the shortest period possible. Distinguished colleagues, it is against this background that I implore the entire African leadership to ensure that the implementation of the mega programs and projects under the first 10-year plan of Agenda 2063 are expedited and that their projects, the projects, the such projects as the Grand Inga, Continental Free Trade Area, the Single Aviation Authority, and the High Speed Train, which we have, High Speed Train Network, which we have spoken about, discussed upon, and resolved to implement, among others, that these be hastened and uh, see industrialization and integration taking place in our continent. Finally, allow me to once again commend the NEPAD agency and the collective African leadership for having taken us this far in our economic development endeavors. We have set, up, set for ourselves targets in the form of Agenda 2063 and the implementation of high impact and cross-cutting projects under the first 10-year plan. I count on our collective leadership and those that shall come after us that together we will attain the ideals of the Africa we want. A prosperous, prosperous Africa, an African environment which is peaceful and sees that its own people are united, united among themselves nationally and as we have decided under the OAU now the African Union as its organization mechanism to support Africa, to defend Africa, and to promote Africa as a continent for Africans, Africa for Africans, Africa as it relates to other continents, a liberated Africa, an ambitious Africa, and a progressive Africa. I want to thank you once again, President Zuma, for the abundant hospitality that we are receiving from you and your people, and for listening. And I thank you, members of the audience. I thank you.
I uh, thank you, Mugabe, President Mugabe, the President, uh, Chairperson of the African Union. I thank you for this important address and for your leadership and your enlightened vision for the transformation of Africa and the implementation of NEPAD, as you rightly indicated. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to uh, give uh, an address uh, to the 33rd session of the NEPAD Heads of State and Government Orientation Committee. Uh, President, the Chairperson of the African Union, uh, President uh, Jacob Zuma, host of the summit, dear colleagues, ministers, Chairperson of uh, the African Union Commission, the uh, President of the African Development Bank, uh, uh, Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of Spain, uh, Representative of the Spanish Government, Executive uh, Director of uh, the uh, Orientation uh, uh, of NEPAD, the uh, Executive Secretary of the United Nations for Africa, ladies and gentlemen, on your behalf and on my own behalf, I wish to sincerely thank our brother, Jake, President Jacob Zuma, for the uh, traditional hospitality accorded to us in South Africa. I thank you all for attending and your attendance once again to the interest you give to the work of our orientation Chers committee. Colleagues, dear colleagues, the year 2015 uh, is a, an important phase in the development agenda with the evaluation in September in New York of the Millennium Development Goal. 20 years after their adoption in January 2000 in Addis Ababa, we evaluated the the uh, implementation of our uh, projects on infrastructure development in Africa, PIDA. Some of these projects have been implemented within the spirit of NEPAD by associating various states. Others are underway. I also extend my thanks to uh, President Zuma, uh, President of uh, the Presidential Initiative to Promote Infrastructure. I also thank all my colleagues, uh, the coordinators of infrastructure projects for their availability and leadership with the Dakar agenda dedicated to actions, now we have a strategic instrument to mobilize resources with a view to implementing our projects, including through public-private partnerships. I hope that the African Development Bank, through the uh, initiative of the Africa Fund 50, will continue supporting our efforts in this regard. This is also an opportunity for me to uh, congratulate uh, Mr. Kabiroka, the uh, uh, outgoing president of the African Development Bank. Uh, I hope that you will give him a round of applause for the services given to Africa. I, uh, so uh, so uh, we uh, 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 congratulate uh, the outgoing president for his efficient collaboration and his constant support to the NEPAD project. The spirit of NEPAD is well rooted now in the definition of development strategies at the level of the continent. But we also have more progress to produce, to translate our commitment into concrete acts. This is the case of agriculture and food security. Through the set objectives in the detailed plan for the development of agriculture, 
our continent is vast and rich with human and natural resources, and our continent should be able to produce its own food security. And we should continue feeding the rest of the country. So this is our first objective in this regard. I wish to hail the efforts deployed within the framework of the NEPAD, the Kingdom of Spain Fund, to promote capacity building in agricultural techniques in Africa, particularly for rural women. The improvement of women's situation in rural areas is very crucial and is symbolic as we consecrate the theme of our summit, summit to the empowerment of women within the perspective of implementing the Agenda 2063 of Africa. Dear colleagues, during the last G7 summit, which I was honored to attend with other colleagues and to represent our continent. I expressed in my address three major concerns which, in my understanding, contribute to impeding the efforts of development in our countries. The first issue is the illicit flow of funds, including tax evasion. For Africa, phénomène, the phenomenon of, uh, de of capital evasion from uh, 1970 to 2010 led to a loss estimated to $1,300 million. This uh, prejudice is estimated at $60 billion per year. Uh, this is much more than the uh, public aid to development, knowing that the transfer of uh, funds uh, of uh, African diaspora. During the summit declaration, G7 reiterated its commitment to work with developing countries to end this real financial hemorrhage. But more effort is needed in this regard. The second element in my address was about the, uh, the mining uh, and oil contracts to underline that in many, many of our countries still find it difficult to translate in these contracts a balance between the interests of investors and the interests of local populations and the state, in spite of the progress made with regard to the initiative of the transparency of extracting industries, uh, operational contracts are still unbalanced at the expense of producing countries uh, in the sharing of resources as much as in the system of taxation. In addition, most countries lack qualified human resources to be able to carry out negotiations in the face of companies accompanied with the best experts. We must continue our concerted efforts in order to have more equitable oil and mining contracts in terms of tax requirements and social justice. This goes through the rebuilding of uh, the capacity of our countries in technical and financial expertise. And this is the meaning of the initiative Deep Connex by G7 to promote the support to developing countries in the negotiations of complex contracts, particularly in the extracting industries. I invite the NEPAD agency to uh, consider the commitments made by G7 in terms of Connex and to produce a report to our meeting in January. The third and final uh, point which I raised with our partners uh, deals with the crucial issue of access to energy.
This is an absolute urgency for our continent, which continues to eliminate others while remaining the, less, uh, the, country, uh, the countries with less energy. It, the, the cost of energy in Africa is the most expensive in the world, with an average of 35 to 45 cents per kilowatt hour. Our populations pay a, a lot for uh, electricity and they still undergo repeated power cuts and they only have the street to express their anger. And this is a serious threat to peace, security and stability in our countries. That's why the question of energy should remain at the heart of the NEPA agenda with uh, federating projects, integrating projects. President Mugabe referred to INGA and other major dam projects, integrating projects that should bring together different countries for a more efficient impact. To conclude, I would like to express my thanks to uh, Mrs. Uh, Dlamini Zuma, Chairperson of the African Union Commission, and uh, to uh, uh, Mr. Abraham Mayake, the Executive Director of the NEPAD Agency, uh, for their efforts for, uh, to reach our common objectives. I uh, I uh, associate uh, to this all our African and international partners. I wish uh, to uh, thank you very much for your attention. I, uh, this was supposed to be the end of our opening ceremony. Now I have to give the floor to His Excellency Mohamedou Buhari, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We, we were supposed to, have, uh, to give him the floor, but I would give the floor to his representative uh, to deliver his address. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Your Excellency. Excellency. President Jacob Zuma, host of this meeting, Excellency President Robert Mugabe, Chair of the African Union, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, President Mohamed Buhari has asked me to read this statement in his name, and I read. I thank you, Mr. Chairman, for giving me the floor to make these few remarks. I wish to commend the exemplary leadership that you have brought to this committee since your assumption of office. I believe that it is because of your quality that you have again been given a mandate to continue to lead the committee. In the same vein, I want to congratulate the Chief Executive of NEPAT for his exertions. And in particular, I wish to congratulate and thank President Jacob Zuma for the excellent facilities put at our disposal for this meeting, as well as the warm hospitality expended, extended to us since our arrival in this beautiful country a few days ago. That the Republic of South Africa plays host to the secretariats of the two structures of the African Union, NEPAD and APRM, is a reflection of the deep and unequivocal dedication of the Republic of South Africa to the cause of Africa. As you are no doubt aware, this is the very first time that I'll be attending the meeting of this committee since I assumed leadership of my country as president. Permit me, therefore, to commend the African leaders, especially the founding members of NEPAD, for spearheading the achievements and sustainability of the new Partnership for Africa's development for the past 14 years. As a founding member of NEPAD, Nigeria is totally committed to its vision and will therefore not waver until the ideals and objectives for which the body was established are realized. 
Nigeria recognizes that NEPAD remains the strategic initiative and the body of philosophy to support the structural economic transformation of Africa. I wish, therefore, to reassure you that Nigeria will sustain its support and deploy all within its reach for the acceleration of the implementation of NEPAD programs and projects. Nigeria equally acknowledges the need to adhere to the core principles of partnership, leadership, and ownership championed by NEPAD. Hence, our government will continue to deepen and broaden the ownership of NEPAD amongst our nationals in order to collectively address poverty eradication, inclusive growth, and sustainable development. I wish to commend His Excellency President Jacob Zuma for his role as the chairman of the Presidential Infrastructure Champions Initiative. Under his guide, some measure of progress has been achieved in the implementation of projects assigned to some member states, including Nigeria. In this connection, I wish to reiterate Nigeria's readiness to robustly champion NEPAD programs and projects and in particular to inform that we have commenced work on both the Trans-Sahara gas pipeline as well as the Trans-Sahara highway. We do intend and commit to complete these projects. Equally, we are working vigorously on the plane of agriculture to achieve food security. We have, in the last four years, increased our production capacity, but are more than ever determined to pursue the value chain in agriculture in Nigeria. Mr. Chair, I wish to reiterate Nigeria's unequivocal determination to remain committed to the NEPAD vision. I should, in this vein, like to commend President Mikey Sal, Chairman of our committee, and members of the NEPAD Steering Committee, CEO of NEPAD and Coordinating Agency, and the entire staff of NEPAD for their unflinching commitment to the NEPAD vision, especially in the giant strides recorded in the various programs that we've just heard this morning. In particular, we acknowledge and appreciate the various technical support being extended to NEPAD Nigeria in the area of mobilizing policymakers and other stakeholders to generate more awareness and partnership in the implementation of NEPAD programs in Nigeria. We in Nigeria expect that NEPAD should continue to pursue the policy and course of transformative change in the economies of African countries under the aegis of the African Union. It should therefore prioritize industrialization, value addition, energy development, women empowerment, promoting double-digit growth, and infrastructure financing through public-private partnership initiatives and trade facilitation. Equally important is regional integration through our regional economic communities. Mr. Chairman, let me place on record that in the bid to generate more awareness on NEPAD programs, Nigeria is already planning to organize the second edition of the NEPAD Africa Trade Fair of Indigenous Products and Services slated for October 2015 in Abuja. As expected, invitations will be extended to entrepreneurs, captains of industries, as well as international organizations, including the African Union Commission, well ahead of time. We look forward to your active participation at this trade fair. I thank you. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Représentant du Président Mohamed Bouhari. Je voudrais vous demander de lui transmettre toutes nos félicitations suite à son élection à la tête de la République fédérale du Nigeria. Et nous lui souhaitons la bienvenue au sein du comité 
will come him to the NEPAD committee and to let you express our pleasure that we have in working with him hand in hand to move forward our common agenda. Thank you so much once again. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to continue our session behind closed doors. So I'd like to invite to call upon the journalists, observers, and other invited guests to allow us to continue our meeting behind closed doors only. Um, member state delegations of the African Union and of uh, regional economic communities and partner institutions that have been accredited to attend this session should remain behind. Uh, thank you so much for your understanding. Thank you. 